Okay, so my name is Patrick Staff. Uh, I'm an artist. I think I usually tell people that um, I work a lot with text, with performance, videos, um, and like publishing, I guess, printing things. The kind of well-behaved version of how I got to where I am is that I um, studied at Goldsmiths, which was my undergrad, my BA, um, which was in fine art and critical contemporary studies. So a lot of critical studies, a lot of visual culture, um, kind of contemporary philosophy, stuff like that, alongside a studio practice. But during that time, I was getting more and more interested in performance. And so I started to study dance in the evenings. So I would kind of like go to, go to school or my job in the day and then in the evenings take ballet and Cunningham and modern dance and stuff like that. And they kind of like crossed over. Yeah, and then that, after that, like after I left art school, I kind of um, wanted to spend time away from the institution. So um, I got really involved in like self-organized artist groups or self-organized study groups. So like rather than going back for anything like an MA or anything like that, I was just involved in like self self organization with other artists and working collectively and stuff like that. I first got given a copy of the play by a friend of mine who um, is one of those people who can just scour secondhand bookshops. And, and like, this is a long time ago now, he was just picked up this play and read it and then was like, oh, I think you'd be really into this. And I read it and like, I didn't even love it necessarily. Um, but I, I guess it's always just been floating around. Like I've always moved house and packed it in the box of books. Um, and maybe just as, maybe as my work shifted and started to go in different directions, but also the way that I was trying to understand myself as a political subject and also a kind of contemporary political sphere that we're living in, the play seemed to almost gain traction in my mind. It started to feel um, more and more relevant to where we are right now. What I was interested in was the idea that there could be this prince who was exhausted by being a prince. Um, like, it's not fun. You, no one wants to be the prince. You're kind of like forced through all of these hoops. And it's, and it's just worn him out, and he's exhausted, and he's done. Um, and as a result, he keeps sleepwalking. And all of the time that he's sleepwalking, he's talking in his sleep, and then is kind of confessing to these desires, and confessing, um, in my mind, he's confessing to the desire to want to live differently. And I think that, for me, is what felt really um, like urgent, I suppose, to thinking about how we live today. Um, what's going on here, what's going on in the States where I like also split my time. Um, it feels like the way that like contemporary ongoing crisis can exhaust you, um, but it's that very nature of exhaustion that starts to kind of propel you to want to do something else, to be something else, to love differently, to think differently. Um, but, but then, but you can be kind of trapped in these mechanisms, you know? But dealing with this narrative that is so much about sleepwalking and dreaming allows you like a huge amount of space and a huge amount of room for interpretation and psychedelia and non sequiturs and all of this stuff. Um, so I knew that, 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 um, there was the possibility to have a lot of space within it. And what ended up happening is that you, you, you barely see any action in the play at all. It's mostly described to you um, alongside other far more kind of abstract images, you know. Um, in, the, in the video that I've made, there's this combination of um, video footage that some of it is filmed on like a fancy like nice camera like this one. A lot of it's on my iPhone, uh, but then there's also a lot of 16 mil film that is like mixed into it. 
and then a lot of um, these kind of hand-painted abstract bits of animation. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like loads of, loads of stuff on my iPhone, like crazy, but also most of the 16 mil stuff is either um, like scratched or painted leader. So it's like barely any 16 mil images. It's all like, you can just take it by hand and kind of go at it and then scan it and see what, see what happens. Um, there's also a lot of stuff just stolen from other places, really liberally, a lot of music. Um, I was also doing a lot of like, saying field recordings makes it sound too fancy. I, <laughs> I was doing a lot of recording of just like different sounds. And so there's like in the video, there's a lot of like sounds of riding the underground, like, uh, the subway in New York and stuff like that. Um, I, I was traveling a lot. Um, there were different people that I wanted to talk to between London and New York and, and LA and some of it's in Germany. Um, so there's also, I don't know, there's a, there's a sense of like dislocation, I think, um, and a lot of travel, which is kind of what dreaming is. Yeah. But I suppose, in a way, um, there is this Venn diagram to the whole thing. Like, in my mind, I sort of broke the play into its three constituent parts, which is, um, at the beginning of the play, the prince is sleepwalking, he's exhausted, and he's dreaming. And then in the middle section of the play, he's imprisoned, um, and is sort of trying to reconcile what's happening inside of this jail cell. And then in the final section, he's executed, maybe. It's sort of ambiguous. And so in a way, I, I, I kind of ch carved it into these three sections. Um, and in each of these sections, then invited other people to just talk about their own art or their own work or things they're interested in. Um, and yeah, like I said, like let it spiral out from there. There's a, there's a kind of subtext in the work and in the video um, of a maybe struggle between day and night. Um, that maybe like a, a kind of Grecian battle between the sun and the moon, um, which I think all of us can interpret in lots of different ways. At the moment, I feel very exhausted during the day and very awake at night, which I think happens to a lot of people the way that we think about what's going on in our lives, in our world, problems can grow at night and shrink in the day and vice versa. Um, so all the way through the work, I'm thinking about this push and pull between our, our nighttime way of being and our daytime way of being. And partly that's because for the prince, it's all collapsing and it's all falling into each other. And the prince doesn't know which is the daytime and which is the nighttime and, and in what way to behave or not to behave. So at the DCA here, there are two galleries. Um, and so I kind of knew that I wanted to have one very bright light space and one very, very dark space and to play them off against each other. Um, and then in the, in the very, very bright space are these photograms that I've made. Some of the images very much directly relate to the play, like the glove or the knives or the chain. Um, but I think that, you know, all of us can have these ever shifting relationships to objects. A glove might remind you of something completely separate. It might be the glove that you lost. It might be, I don't know, it could be anything. Um, that's what's nice about symbols. They're simple, they're loaded, um, they're ever shifting and ever changing. It, art is one incredible way to try to escape waged labor and to um, carve out a space that doesn't have to mean productivity, that doesn't have to mean discipline. Um, it, it, it can and it has the potential to be the space where we redefine everything. Um, and, uh, you know, at the moment, I think it's something that we have to kind of fight for. We kind of have to fight to say that this space is necessary. Um, and, you know, 
yeah, in, in sort of like contemporary, deeply troubling conservative moments, I don't think we're necessarily being asked to think differently. But I think that being, being open to things and being um, challenged and being confused or even lost um, are like necessary feelings.